Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up. The month of June was a really wild and crazy reading month for me because I read 16 books this month, which is pretty normal, but I read one of my new favorite books of the year this month and I also had two one-star books, which is so incredibly rare. Like I never give one-star books, but I read some of the worst books that I've read this year this month. But before we do jump into the June wrap-up, I wanted to say a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, which is HelloFresh. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. HelloFresh delivers quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week so that you can savor all the flavors of summer right from your home. They have 30 different dinner recipes to choose from every week, which is the most of any meal kit. I love that HelloFresh sends you step-by-step -step instructions on how to cook different things so that it makes cooking a lot more fun and a lot more stress-free. Plus, most of their meals are ready in about 30 minutes or less, so it means less time cooking in the kitchen and more time out in the sun this summer. HelloFresh is also up to 72% cheaper than going and dining out at a restaurant, which is just wild how much money you can be saving by eating at home and using HelloFresh. HelloFresh offers veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick to your food goals. And I love that with HelloFresh you can eat more sustainably because it helps you cut down on your food waste by like 25% compared to just getting regular groceries because they'll give you pre-proportioned things of exactly what you need so that you're never having anything left over by the time you finish the meal and you're not throwing out food that you didn't end up using. This afternoon I was able to make this delicious dish that is meatballs with bulgogi sauce with roasted carrots, ginger rice, and creamy sriracha and this meal was so freaking good. I've really been craving a good like meatballs dish but I never knew how to make it myself and with HelloFresh you know they make it so easy because I'm not the kind of person that would just know how to make a tasty meatball by myself but I love that they send you all the ingredients that you need. They make it super easy to learn. I feel like I always learn so much about cooking I'm not the best cook myself, but I feel like I learned so much just from their recipes and it was so freaking tasty I can't wait to make this again Like genuinely it was so good and I was so proud to say that I was able to make this by myself You know like what a flex so yeah Make sure to go to hellofresh.com and use my code Gabby 16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts That is a lot of free food 16 what let me say it again just in case you missed it hellofresh.com Use my code Gabby 16 and get up to 16 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That is no joke a lot of food and definitely worth checking out. So thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back to the wrap up. So in the month of June, as I mentioned, I read 16 books. Out of those books, I had three five-star books, I had four four-star books, five three-star books, two two-stars, and two one-stars. I mean, this month was just all across the board. Like, I had so many different ratings and so many different feelings about books. And then as far as genres go that I was reading, I read four horror books this month, five thrillers, five romances, one one sci-fi and one non-fiction. I was working on a few different reading vlogs this month. I did a, you know, reading new thriller and horror reading vlog at the beginning of this month, so I'll have that link down below if you missed it. And I also recently just did a reading LGBT books on my TBR for Pride Month kind of video, so I'll have that link down below as well. And if you're on my Patreon, uh, this month the Patreon exclusive video was a video of me and my mom both buddy reading the book troop pick for this month, and it's like a 38 minute reading vlog of both of us reading it, giving updates on our thoughts and it was a super fun time so if you want to check out that video again I'll have that link down below. The first book that I read in the month of June was Just Like Mother which this is a horror book that I've been very excited about because this cover is just so intriguing and this is the first book that I read for that uh, reading vlog that I did with like reading horror and like new horror and thriller books and this book was pretty interesting. Um, we're following these two women who are cousins and when they were younger they like escaped from this cult and now they're reconnecting as adults but the cousin that you know is reaching out and wanting to reconnect she kind of like wants something from her and it's just a tad bit unsettling you know it's a little creepy a little disturbing I think if you go into this one expecting like an intense horror book, you might be a little disappointed because it is kind of a slow burn. Um, we do get a lot of like flashback chapters to like when the girls were younger, but I personally thought that these characters were so interesting that I didn't mind that it felt kind of like a slow burn. I also do think the direction that this story goes in is a little bit predictable, but at the same time, I was so creeped out and like unsettled by what I was reading that I didn't really mind it too much. And I think the ending of this book is just a freaking trip. So I 
don't know, I had a fun time with this one. I ended up giving it like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then I read The Island, which this is a thriller that's by the same author as The Chain, so that's why I was pretty excited to read this one. I know a lot of my friends are also really loving this book right now, and this is kind of like the vacation gone wrong trope, which I usually love in books. We're following this family that's originally from like Seattle area, and they're taking this trip out to this island, and as soon as they're on the island, something happens that's kind of like boom intense. I don't remember if it tells you in the premise like what happens or not, so I'm gonna keep it vague, but something happens and then from that point forward, this book is just like non-stop action and intense things happening to this family. I wanted to love this book so much, you know, and I thought the beginning was pretty interesting, but it slowly just kind of got to be a little repetitive for me. Like I just needed things to be happening, but like in a way that was like moving the plot forward. Like I don't know how to explain it, but it just started to feel a little repetitive with its action. However, I do think if you're gonna read this book, I would highly recommend the audiobook because the audiobook has like so many sound effects and like it has rain sounds, it has dogs barking, it has, you know, music sometimes, like thunderstorms, like raining. It's just so cool. It's really an experience to listen to this audiobook. So if you're going to choose to read this book, I would highly recommend checking out the audiobook. I think it's worth it. Yeah, for me personally, this was about a three out of five. Like I just didn't find myself super engaged with the story. Like by the halfway point, I was just like ready for it to be over. And the ending just wasn't super memorable for me. Like this thriller overall just wasn't really memorable for me, but I still had a decent time while I was reading it. So it's a three for me. And then the next book I read was First Born by Will Dean. This one is a thriller. This one's actually going on sale July 5th, and this was an ARC copy that I had sent to me by the publisher. And this one, sadly, was one that I was super disappointed by. Um, basically, all we know going into this thriller is that we're following these twin sisters who are identical. And one of them is currently living in New York, and the other one is living in London. And the family, when they're all in London, they hear that the that their twin that the twin sister in New York has recently died. And so they have like all the family goes to New York, and they're trying to figure out what happened. And then it's like one of those things where they slowly start to find out, like, oh my God, she was murdered, and like who who. Could have done it and like what's going on and I will admit you know I think this book did have an interesting setup because there was a point in the novel where I was suspicious of like so many different characters but at the same time I feel like this book's twist is so kind of expected and just kind of like overdone and I'm just tired of seeing this in thrillers. I feel like this book thinks that it's more clever than it actually is and I was just kind of annoyed by the reveals in this book. I was just like, oh my god, typical. So I ended up giving this one two stars. But I do think if you're someone who ha doesn't really read thrillers very often, you might be more surprised by this than I was. So I still think this is probably an enjoyable book for other people. It just wasn't for me. And then especially for this next book that I read, which is Hyde by Kirsten White. Sadly, um, this is one of the one star books that I had this month. And it makes me sad because this is one of the books I had such high hopes for. Because listen to this premise, okay? It says, a high stakes hide and seek competition turns deadly. Like, does that not sound like everything that I should love in a book? Like, it sounds so cool. It's also beautiful and stunning. Like, look at this copy. It's just everything. And I'm sad that I hated it as much as I did because I feel like for a book to have this premise, I cannot believe how incredibly boring this book was. None of these characters are characters that I gave a shit about. And I also find it very frustrating when a book is marketed as an adult book and all of these characters read like they're like 16 years old. I'm like, there is no way in hell that this character is in her mid-20s with the way that these characters talk to each other. I'm like, this is some high school drama bullshit. The only reason why I finished it is because I was reading it while I was on live reading sprints with my Patreon and, you know, as much as I wanted to DNF it, I just wanted to see where it goes because the book is short enough. It's only about 240 pages, so I was like, I'll just power through it. I just didn't really enjoy where the story ended up going. I just thought it was boring. I just didn't care. But yeah, what a bummer. It's a one-star book and I, I don't like writing books one star, but at the same time, I feel like I enjoyed this significantly less than anything that I've rated two stars, and I just don't have anything positive to say about it, so I feel like that has to be a one star for me. And then the next book that I read was We Can Never Leave This Place, and this one is a horror novella. This one is actually more like horror fantasy than I was anticipating, and I think that's my biggest, um, you know, critique or like thing with this book that I didn't vibe with is the fact that it's a lot more fantasy than I was anticipating. I went into this book knowing absolutely nothing, so I had no idea 
what to expect. I just know that I've really enjoyed this author's previous books and so I just kind of went in knowing that I was gonna love the writing and that's about it. And I do love the writing of this book. I think this author is so incredibly talented when it comes to writing horror and when it comes to writing things that just really get under your skin and are just really creepy and eerie and disturbing. But this book in particular, like I don't know, I don't think that I'm the exact audience for this book. And this book is really short so I don't want to give too much away but if you just want a general synopsis, we're following this young girl and her mother who, you know, her dad has recently passed away and then it's about how her mother is bringing in somebody new into the home. But again, was not expecting this book to be as fantasy heavy as it is. And so I ended up giving this one a three out of five because it was good, it just wasn't necessarily for me. And then the next book that I read is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. This is the first book that I read for my reading LGBT books for Pride Month video. And this was such a lovely surprise, you know, this author previously wrote the book The Death of Vivek Oji, which is a book that I'm a huge fan of, but that one's definitely more like literary fiction, whereas this one is more romance, which I did not expect. Okay, when I first started this book, I thought it was going to be like a literary fiction, but I was pretty surprised to find out that it is actually a romance book and it's very romance heavy. And I think the romance that happens in this book, for me at least, it was so unexpected and so like refreshing and different and it kept me engaged the whole time. I was like, oh shit, this is so interesting. And I just really enjoyed this one. I think this author has such a gorgeous writing style that I feel like I'd really enjoy like anything that they write but I especially loved the couple in this book. I just thought that they were really beautiful and I just loved reading about them. I ended up giving this one four out of five stars because I didn't love this one as much as I love The Death of Evac OG but I still think this one is fantastic. I can see this ending up on a lot of people's you know favorites of the year. And then the next book that I read was Home Field Advantage. This one's a young adult female female romance and this one I listened to on audio from my library. This one we follow these two young girls who one of them is a cheerleader and one of them is going to be the new quarterback on the football team at their school which you know we love taking a common trope of like the cheerleader and the football player but then making it queer love to see it amazing unfortunately though for me this book just ended up being fine i just think this was i don't know it's one of those young adult books that reads a very young adult and i know that that's not a good criticism to say because it's like of course it does it's a young adult book like what do you expect but i feel like sometimes you know there's young adult books that i feel like can be read by anybody you know and then sometimes i think there's young adult books that are just intended for young adult audiences and this is one of those books that i just felt like personally i just felt a little bit too old to be reading it or like i was getting annoyed with like the high school drama there's like a lot of you know homophobia between their friends and it was just frustrating to read about and i just didn't connect with these characters as much as i wanted to I feel like I've read books that are kind of similar to this that are much better, but I ended up giving this one three out of five. You know, I thought it was fine. It just wasn't my favorite. And then the next book that I ended up reading this month is a sci-fi novel. It's called The Darkness Outside Us, and this one is technically marketed as young adult, but I personally would consider this to be more adult, or at least this one definitely reads a lot more adult. I think the only reason this is getting marketed as a young adult is because the main character is about 17 going on 18, but honestly, other than that, this feels feels very adult sci-fi to me, which I personally loved. And all I knew going into this book is that it was about two boys who were alone in space together. And our main character, the one that we're following, he finds out that he's on a mission to save his sister. And like, they don't really know more than that. I loved the tension between these two characters. Like their romance was just everything. I love in the beginning, they kind of start with like, you know, uh, our the love interest Kodiak, which by the way, coolest name ever, love that name. He just wants to be isolated and wants to be alone and he doesn't really want anything to do with him. And I just loved it because the tension between them was just so great. And I feel like part, for me, part one of this book is a little bit more romance heavy, but then leading up to part two, there is some plot twist in things. And then it starts to feel a lot more sci-fi towards the end of this book and I love that this is one of those sci-fi books where sometimes you know because my my thing with reading sci-fi is that sometimes I get a little nervous that it's gonna feel like too much and it's just gonna go way over my head but I feel like this book it just balances it enough that it never feels like the sci-fi was too much for my brain to understand but it definitely felt more sci-fi heavy at times but I really enjoyed it I don't know I really really loved it by the time I finished this book I knew that it was gonna be like a 4.5 out of 5 stars and that it was gonna be a new favorite 
it. I, it's just something that I really enjoyed. I can see myself revisiting this in the future. And then the next book that I read this month was Chef's Kiss. This one is a romance novel and we're following this chef named Simone and it's about how she starts to catch feelings for her wildly attractive non-binary kitchen manager. And this one, you know, it definitely reminded me quite a bit of that other romance novel I read earlier this year called Love and Disasters because not only do they both involve, you know, food and like working in a restaurant type of situation, but they also do involve the love interest being non-binary. But I feel like out of the two, I personally enjoyed this one quite a bit more. I just really enjoyed the chemistry between these two characters throughout the book. They just shared some really sweet moments that really got to me. But I also want to warn you that I feel like this book could be a little bit more triggering because some of the people working in their restaurant are really like transphobic and really homophobic and they just don't understand and it's really tough and frustrating to read at times. I also do think that, you know, the love interest Ray in this book is just such a ball of sunshine and I just really adore them. I also do love the fact that there's kind of this like YouTube thing going on in this book as well because they're trying to create like viral food videos for YouTube and you know as a YouTuber I just really enjoyed the discussion about like how to go viral on YouTube and like how to how to do YouTube in general like I just really liked that in this book as well. But yeah I guess my biggest critique of this book is that our main protagonist Simone she could get a little frustrating at times you know like there were just things that she would do or say and she would just speak before she even thinks and I'm like girl what are you doing you know so like she kind of drove me a little nuts at times in this book otherwise I really enjoyed this one and I gave it four stars and then the last book that I ended up reading for that LGBTQ plus reading vlog that I did was so happy for you by Celia Lasky and oh my gosh you know I went into this book not really knowing what to expect I just knew that it was a thriller and that it involved a wedding and like these girls were best friends and that it was kind of toxic and holy shit I did not expect to love it the way that I did. Um, I didn't think that this would be a new favorite for me. Like this is in my top faves of the year because this book just opens on this very iconic sentence when she says, if you want to know the story of how my best friend and I ended up trying to kill each other, I should probably start with the night she asked me to be her maid of honor. In this book, we're following our main protagonist. Her name is Robin and you know, her best friend's name is Ellie. They met when they were in like 11th grade in high school and they became very, very close friends very fast. But now it's been like years and years and you know, Ellie and her don't really talk as much anymore just because they have very different lives, you know, and they just have very different things going on. And so they're not as close as they used to be. But Ellie asks her if she can be her maid of honor at her wedding. And Robin's kind of taken off guard by this because they're not that close anymore. This book, oh my god, this book! It has one of the most relatable protagonists I've read about in quite some time, like Robin, for me in this book. She is so relatable! And some people are probably gonna read this and think that she's a total asshole, which is probably valid. But I just personally loved her so much you know she's so like opinionated and like smart about the way that she talks and you know I love that she's a college professor and she's teaching feminist theory and I just think oh my god like some of her inner thoughts in this book and some of her dialogue with like how she talks to people I was just like dude freaking queen shit so relatable that is exactly how I would respond I feel like she is me in book form if I wasn't the kind of person who hated confrontation and always bites my tongue when I don't want to try to argue with someone. But yeah, I love this book so much. I feel like if you're the kind of person who enjoys books about, you know, toxic female friendships, then I think you would really enjoy this book. But yeah, this is a book that I would not recommend for just anybody, you know, because I do think it is quite a slow burn. Like a lot of the beginning is just like flashbacks of like how their friendship started when they were in high school and different things like that. But then the end of this book, like the last 30% or so of this book is just so unhinged and just like wild and like what the fuck dude and I also think if you're the kind of person who sees people having these like huge extravagant weddings and these bridezillas where they're just like everything has to be perfect or the day's gonna be ruined and you can't help but feeling like you want to laugh at them because really like what's the big deal with weddings then I think you would also love this because there's a lot of conversation in this about like how you know society brainwashes us into caring so much about this one day in our lives and I just really loved it I loved the commentary on that I loved the discussion of their friendship and like seeing it all you know ugh, it was just so good it was so good easy five out of five for me but again I know this book will not be for everyone and then I read our book troop pick for the month of June which is the children on the hill by Jennifer McMahon and I won't speak too much on this because 
because I did do an entire live show with my friend Gavin. I'll have that link down below and I did a whole Patreon exclusive reading vlog with my mom reading this book so I'll have that link down below as well. But this book was really good. I really enjoyed myself reading this, you know, in typical Jennifer McMahon fashion. We have two different timelines happening in this book. One is in like the 1970s and one is in the present day. And so in the past chapters we're following these two kids, Violet and Eric, and their gran one day brings home this young girl named Iris and she said, don't tell anybody that she's here like we and let me know if she starts speaking or anything like that and she just brings in this random girl home and says that it's it's their sister now and then in alternate chapters we get the point of view of Lizzie in the present day who is currently running a Monsters Among Us podcast and all these teenage girls are going missing and she's kind of on the hunt to figure out what's going on with that. I don't know, I thought the vibes in this book were just so much fun. Um, There's a lot of references to Frankenstein in this book, which I have not yet read Frankenstein, but this just made me like 10 times more excited to read it. And, like, yeah, I definitely had some issues with like certain things about this book and like the way that it ended like wasn't necessarily my most favorite, but I just had so much fun with this book and it just genuinely made me so happy to read. I was so excited to pick it back up again. And so just for those reasons, I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I had a great time. Unlike what this next book that I read, I kind of have a controversial opinion on this one and I know some people are probably going to be mad at me, but I read Every Summer After. I was just seeing so much hype, okay? I was seeing this book was hyped up everywhere. Everybody was like, this is the book of the summer and I ended up giving this two stars. I was really not a fan of this, but to be honest, I feel like if I had known going into this book what it was going to be about, I probably would have never read it in the first place because this is more of a me thing because this book, it just sounds like something I wouldn't enjoy, you know? because this is a childhood friends to lovers trope and it's very like Nicholas Sparks in the way that this book goes about setting the book up are two love interests who met when they were like young kids they met when they were like 13 now the book takes place like years later in the future when they haven't talked in like 10 years or something crazy like that and his mom has died so she's coming back to the town for the funeral and that's how they're like reconnecting again and the thing that I find kind of annoying about these books is that they're marketed as like adult romance books but then Every other chapter in between the adult chapters, we go into a flashback of when they're like 13 years old and we get to read about 13 year olds for like an extended period of time and they're like early romance that I just did not care about. I don't know, maybe it's just me because this book definitely gave me similar vibes to like Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren and I did not like that book either. So I feel like if you enjoyed that kind of book, you'd probably love this or if you love like, you know, Nicholas Sparks. I do recognize that this book does have an audience, but I also feel like the ending of this this book was so fucking frustrating that it makes me question why this book is getting such great reviews because I feel like more people should be pissed off by the way that this book ends and I just don't get it. You know, I don't get it. It was a two star for me. It probably should have been a one star if I'm being honest because I just didn't really like anything about it. And then the next book that I read this month was The Devil Crept In by Anya Alborn. I was actually, ugh, I was attempting to do another like quick horror reading vlog where I was going to read the three Anya Alborn books that are on my TBR. Then I just completely lost all of the inspiration after reading this one book. So I only vlogged this one book and then completely scrapped the reading vlog. This book is a horror novel and we're following this young boy named Jude who goes missing at the start of this book. And then the point of view that we're following from is from his cousin named Stevie, who's about 10 years old. So, you know, we get the point of view of a 10 year old for most of this book, which is honestly, a little annoying. I didn't think that the point of view was going to be from a 10 year old for like most of this book and I just found that perspective to be kind of frustrating. And then we also do get a second um, you know, kind of storyline happening a little later on in this book and I was a lot more invested in the other storyline that was happening. But I don't know, there were some things about this book that I really enjoyed. Like all of these red tabs were anything that I found to be super creepy and super weird, you know, because it's about how this young boy goes missing and then Stevie, the point of view that we're following from, he just starts to think that he's like seeing something out in the woods or he's like hearing something. He thinks he can see like a silhouette and he's just really, you know, trying to figure out what could have happened to his cousin. I just think it was a really um, creepy atmosphere. Like this author is really good at writing like a creepy, you know, atmosphere and mood for the story, but I just didn't care that much about the characters. And honestly, by the end of this book, I just thought it was so like 
batshit crazy that I was just like, okay, what the fuck am I even reading? Like, but like not in a good way. It was just like, okay, I'm ready for this to be over now. So yeah, I ended up giving this one like a 2.5 out of 5. It just, it wasn't my favorite. It's actually my least favorite book from this author so far. So that's kind of a bummer. And then the next book that I read this month was actually Wicked Heat by Ella Frank. And this one is a male male romance. I wanted to read this one because I had heard good things about it and this author has written some of my other favorite romances. And this one, we're following these two guys named Ryan and Jameson. And one of them is a firefighter. And then the other one is like a news reporter, kind of like journalist dude. And this book, it was okay. It was fine. You know, it was like an average three star romance for me. I really did like the chemistry early on in this book. Like I thought the beginning, I was like, oh my gosh, this might be a new favorite. Like they were just so cute at the beginning. And this also has, you know, the trope in it that I really like where like one of them kind of gets sick and the other one has to take care of him. Oh, and also did I mention it's a roommate's trope, which <laughs> signed me up. I'm like discovering about myself that I love the roommates to lovers trope. Like it's one of my favorite romance tropes. So just the fact that this had that in there as well was something that I really enjoyed about it. But sadly, after like the halfway point of this book, I feel like the, you know, the tension and the romance just kind of fizzled out and I just didn't really care as much anymore. And I don't know, like the ending of this book was just fine. So I ended up lowering my rating to a three star. And then the next book that I ended up reading was I'm Afraid of Men. And this one is actually a nonfiction book and it's a novella. It's very short. And I feel like, you know, with everything happening in the world right now, I feel like this book could not be have more perfectly timed for me to read this. Um, if you didn't know, this author is trans and she's kind of writing about her experiences as a trans woman. This book was very eye-opening for me to read because it definitely gave me a new perspective on, you know, how challenging and how difficult it could be to live in a world where there are such scary and toxic men out there. And especially as someone who's, you know, a trans woman, I just thought it was a really beautiful and inspiring nonfiction book that is just so relevant and so important. And also this book is short, okay? It's only about like 70 pages or something like that. Um, I just, I was able to download the ebook from my library, but I just think that this is such an important read. I mean, I would have liked for it to be just a little bit longer just because because, you know, there are so many great points being made in this book and I would have liked them to just be fleshed out a little bit more and to get more of that. And so I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. And then the last book that I read this month, um, this might shock you because this is my other one star of the month. And the book, the book that I gave one star, it's probably going to surprise you because it's My Summer Darlings by May Cobb. I know because I'm freaking shook, okay? Because The Hunting Wives was one of my favorite books of last year. It was a five-star book for me. It was in my top 15 favorite books of the year. And now, you know, this is the second book from this author. I was pretty excited to read it. I'm like really hoping that this author, May Cobb, isn't another like one-hit wonder situation for me where I really enjoyed one book and then nothing else will live up to that. But this book was so frustrating, okay? Because this book is a thriller, okay? It's a thriller where we're following this group of women. We're following these three women who live in the suburbs in Texas. And then it's about how this man who's like Italian and he's like very worldly, you know, he moves to this small town in Texas. It's about how these three women are all just throwing themselves at him for the entirety of the book. They're just like, oh my god, Will is just so hot and like, I want to be with him. Ridiculous, okay? Because these three women have been friends for their entire lives and two of them are married, by the way, which like, what the fuck? Only one of the women is actually single and available. <laughs> just the whole book is about how everybody's just so hot for Will and everybody just wants to drop their fucking panties for Will and it's just so annoying. Like, oh my god, who the fuck cares? Like, we don't know anything about Will other than the fact that he's like a fucking hottie and he's Italian and the audiobook just does this ridiculous accent for him that I found to be so frustrating. Honestly, like there's nothing really thrillery about this book. It's so annoying because in every other chapter, you know, because we follow from the perspective of all three of these women and then in every other chapter, we get this like random flash forward point of view where they're like, I should have known not to trust him. And like, oh my God, he's coming back and I'm all bloody. And like, you know that some shit is gonna go down. Okay, so that's like the only thrillery thing happening in this book, but it's so fucking obvious what's gonna happen because of everything that's going on. It's like, this guy is just red flag after red flag after red flag. And these girls are just like, but he's hot though. And I can't deal with it. It was a one star book for me. I hated it. I hated everything about it. I don't even know why I finished it to be honest. I just finished it because I wanted to see if I was right. 
with where it was going and I was and then I got more mad. Anyways, those are all of the books that I read for the month of June. If you've read any of these books, please let me know what are your thoughts on them. I had such a, ugh, it was, I feel like it was such a mediocre reading month for me, you know, because I hated a lot of the things that I read and I feel like this always happens where like May was one of the best reading months I've ever had and then then the next month it's like psh, nope. So hopefully that means July is gonna be fantastic, you know, like I'm just trying to be optimistic here. But yeah, that is all for me. I'm very excited for July. I do have a July TBR that's going to be going up hopefully very soon. Um, it's going to include my Summerween TBR because Summerween is happening in July and I'm so excited. And so yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.